Welcome to another video of mine. If you don't know me, my name is Brayden, and you should probably subscribe to this channel. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, please, because I desperately fucking need it. But, for today, uh, since it is my favorite, it's so fucking cliche, my favorite, ho like, my favorite holiday is Halloween, okay? Since I have, like, this whole month planned out of, in videos. Today I'm going to be talking about my, I guess you could say, haunted paranormal experiences, if you will. Uh, maybe even a little demonic. Uh, so, uh, why don't we just dive right into it. So, let's do this shit. So, the first story I have for you today is that I was, uh, and this is a good one, this is a good story. It's saying, you know, boo, you know, I'm here to scare you, no, 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 no. This one's a good one. I was about eight years old, and I uh, was living at my grandma's house. And I woke up getting ready for school, and I walked into the kitchen, and um, I usually uh, got chocolate milk or some shit right before school. It was like my coffee back in the day. And uh, I'd heat it up and whatnot. So I got to the kitchen, and I turned, and I actually saw both, both of my great grandparents sitting across from each other at the kitchen table. And it didn't really startle me. I just felt warm and loved. So I wasn't scared. And then I went into the bathroom to shower. And after I got out of the shower, um, they were walking back to where their bedroom was. And, um, it didn't really freak me out, but I didn't think they would be there still. Um, so, I instantly kind of like ran to the laundry room, which was past the kitchen. Just so, maybe, I, did, I didn't want to see them leave, really. And then my grandma walked out. My grandma, who's alive, walked out. And uh, I didn't tell anybody for a couple of months, and then eventually I told them because I... Uh, I saw my great-grandparents quite often, whether if it was walking down the hallway or, you know, something. I always saw them, so it wasn't a big surprise to me. By age 11, which, rewind, er, I was born kind of attracted to the, the other side, I guess. Uh, very sensitive, and that's how some of my family members are. They can since when a spirit is near and they, I don't know if they, but I know whether if it's a good spirit or if it's a bad spirit. So, uh, so going back now, 11 years old, I had moved, um, out of the country to the city and, um, we had this basement and I never fucking liked this basement, okay? So, uh, we're checking the house out and everything, and the, the owner does not hesitate to tell us that a little boy had drowned in the backyard in his own pool. His mother found him, and then I guess she had killed herself. Um, so, that was kind of weird. But I guess he just wanted to tell us because maybe it was a part of the law. I don't know, I was 11 years old, so I don't really know shit at that point. So... I am moving in, and I have the same dream. Never told anyone about this. Um, I had the same dream uh, every night that I lived there. And uh, I would go back and forth to that house, to my grandma's house. And I'd have the same dream, and the same dream was me walking through the kitchen where the basement door was. And let me remind you, the basement door was fucking creepy looking, okay? It was the creepiest fucking door in the world. Because you had that door, and then you had the door that leads into the garage. So, overall, I thought it was just fucking creepy, okay? So, I was walking through the kitchen, and I opened this, the basement door, and I went downstairs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. As I'm walking down the stairs, I hear, like, curling screams from men 
and as I get down the stairs, there are cages of, um, men. They're, they're, they're full of men. There had been at least six or seven. And they were slaves, and I didn't notice that until, like, I kept dreaming it over and over and over. And all of a sudden, these three women just, like, pop out of nowhere. And they are hurting these people. And later, you know, I woke up, and it was like a terrible nightmare that I just kept reliving. Like, I was in fucking purgatory or something. And so, what happened after that was, I did some research, and it turns out the house was built in 1892. So, it was fucking old. But it was a nice house for being old. So, I really wasn't going to question any, and like, I wasn't going to go into any further investigation, because why? I mean, there were vivid dreams every fucking night. Something's going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I knew that maybe that happened, or maybe it was just something that, I don't know. Uh, but, anyway, still living in the house, um, I would be in the computer room. All I would hear was, like, walking back and forth and talking. And so, most of the talking was in the bathroom, which was, like, right next to the computer room. So, it was kind of weird for me, but I just turned up my music. But then, the footsteps got louder, and eventually I would just go outside if it wasn't too cold, because this was kind of around winter time. And, uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to hear it no more. And, uh, finally I moved back to my grandma's because I just, I couldn't take it anymore because the dreams got worse. It was the same dream, but it was like each night it was like something else was happening to these men. And, uh, that, that story, I never really, I never saw the little boy who drowned in the pool or the mother that killed herself. I never saw them. So... I don't know, but if this happened in that basement, I just hope to God that somebody can set them free because they don't deserve reliving that every day. Like, I had to relive that in my dreams. Maybe they were trying to tell me something. Maybe they were, you know, maybe since I'm sensitive, maybe the, the men were just crying out for help thinking maybe I could help them, but me being 11 years old, not knowing shit, I couldn't help them. Um... Later down the road, things calmed down. Uh, I heard the occasional footsteps and knocking and all that weird shit. But it wasn't up until I was 15 that it really started happening again. And it started getting really aggressive. And this is where the demonic part comes in because it, it just, it's not right and it didn't feel right. It felt really nasty. <clears throat> so. In about 2012-2013, uh, I was sleeping in my bed at my grandma's, and I was sleeping, and uh, I woke up all of a sudden, and I couldn't move. I, I couldn't move, and I just kept telling myself, if I move, something's going to happen to me. It, I don't know, but I went ahead and I moved. I was laying on my stomach, so I turned to my back. So I rubbed my eyes and I was just trying to look and then I saw this black figure standing at the edge of my bed. And let me remind you that I always kept my door locked at night. It was just a habit of mine. I loved having my door locked and I still do. And I instantly froze. And I, t I turned right back on my stomach because I didn't want to see it. Uh, I closed my eyes and I just prayed for it to go away and like a big like ball of energy just like left. It was like a big weight off my chest because it wasn't there anymore. So I was so fucking happy it wasn't there anymore. But a couple of days later, the same thing had happened again. And I knew something was in, in my presence. And I was like, not even going to fucking move. But my blanket started like tugging a little bit. And it started tugging down. And I swear to God these stories are true. I swear to God. The blanket started like pulling off me. And I instantly thought, I'm about to be ripped off my fucking bed. 
and I didn't like that because I I just kept feeling like it was just so fucking nasty and it wanted to do mean things and then I started hearing fucking growling and I know it wasn't my dog because my dog was passed out she always she always fucking sleeps and I heard growling and it didn't come from my dog because it definitely wasn't like a dog type of growling and uh, this entity touched my foot and that's when I spoke up and I said you have to leave and it did so about 16 I moved into an apartment and um, with my mom of course and it was a nice change uh, you know a lot more opportunities I got to meet really good friends and I was happy there but it was like each time I moved or whatever it's like it's not the house maybe it's me and it's following me whatever the fuck it is so when I lived there nothing major happened but footsteps turned into stomps and the neighbors would complain you know my mom worked all day so I was home all day or I was at the mall so I was usually you know at home working on something and the neighbors would complain about there's something stomping and y'all need to stop and I was like no one's stomping okay I'm in one room okay I am not my thing just decide my camera decided to shut off I don't fucking know why but back to what I was saying um, nothing really happened when I lived at the apartment except for it was just it was evil and I became a person that I wasn't and so I instantly moved back to where I was living before and um, you know just it was just footsteps and all that stupid shit and knocking and I actually 17 I went and I seen uh, a sidekick medium or whatever and she told me a lot of positive things up until this point now it's probably no biggie to a lot of you guys but I kinda know what's going on so she said this and she said that and then she said there are three spirits following you two giving me the sign that they travel together meaning they're a couple or they were a couple and they are there to protect you but this one he's a man and he's very evil and I was like do what and she said he's a very evil man he is so angry that he's bringing along these entities with him and I had told her about my experiences and she said I want you to know that the man at the edge of your bed that was him and I thought holy shit because it all hit me that the two couples that were protecting me are my great-grandparents and the one person that was angry with me, or just evil and angry in general, was actually my grandpa on another side of the family. And he was a very unhappy man, I'll say that. He didn't care about anything but himself. And he definitely went out in his own way, I will say. Maybe he regretted the things he'd done. Maybe he didn't. But she basically told me that he was being sent to hell and he refused to go. So now he's back here on earth, you know, trying to do things to me. But the two people that travel together are not letting him. So I thought, okay, so maybe everything that has happened to me that's bad they have stopped him from doing it. So I thought, okay, I'm protected. You know, it's great. All right. And she 
said, be careful. And I was like, oh. She's actually being really stern with me. So, I get home and everything, and I just, I can't believe what she said. And a couple of things that happened after that, where I would be at a friend's house, and it was weird because she has this staircase. And I was downstairs, of course, all by myself, sleeping on the couch. And there was a staircase. And I never liked it. I never liked the apartment in general because I just, it was, for some reasons, me and apartments don't get along too well, I guess. But this one probably had the most experience that I know of. Because the apartment that I lived in, I didn't really have much experience. I, I didn't really see anything and I didn't feel anything but evilness and everything. But this was different. So, one night I was just watching TV and the TV turns off. And I thought, okay, so I'm going to turn it back on. I didn't really think anything of it because I just didn't want to. I knew the feeling of the house and I just didn't want to be bothered by it. And I'll be honest, I probably had a couple of drinks, so I just didn't really give a shit. So, the TV shut off again. And I thought, okay, this is bullshit. So I turned it back on, and then I heard footsteps coming down the staircase. And it stopped midway. And there's this peak. I never liked it. I still don't fucking like it to this day. And I saw a fucking face in that little peak and then it decided to go back up I guess because obviously it wasn't coming downstairs because I heard it stop midway and then it started walking back upstairs and I thought this ain't fucking happening right now so I go to the kitchen and I feel like there's 20 people fucking staring at me and I've always had that feeling of where something's staring at me or whatever I think a lot of us do but it was like all eyes were on me and it wasn't a good feeling. So I just, I turned on the TV. I kind of turned up the, the volume a little loud. And I also played music on my phone, of course. And I didn't want to think of it. I tried distracting myself from it because if I knew if I thought about it or grew toward it, it would have probably done something. Me. Um, I don't know what, but, you know, something would have fucking happened. And the next morning, there it was, you know, nail polish dripped on the carpet. And no one had nail polish that night, and no one was getting their nails done. So that was creepy. And then she was telling me that she had an experience where... She had saw a man at the end of her bed. And I thought, girl, bye. See you later. And I haven't really been to that apartment since. Uh, it was very scary. And I think ever since that experience, I think, you know, it's going to continue on. Because, uh, especially around these times, it just, it's weird. Around, you know, Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas, it just, I don't know. It just, like, the spiritual level, like, grows, I guess, and I don't know. I just, I hope nothing bad happens. I've been told to kind of, like, get some sage and get some holy water just in case, but I don't know about all that stuff. It kind of freaks me out, but, you know, I like being free. I'm not saying I like the shit that's going on because I know this shit's reality. But, like, no. I can handle a scary movie, but when this evilness comes from reality, it kind of scares the shit out of you. And I don't think I'm prepared for it. So I may just have to do something other than pour fucking salt everywhere. But I do pray every night, so that does help. And uh, I probably have... 400 more stories to tell you because I've just had that many experiences especially as a little child I saw 
other kids and I saw people that I never really knew until I like saw them in pictures. So I'm guessing they were family. And then I would even get phone calls where it would be un an unknown caller. Um, and it still happens to this day. An unknown caller and it's white noise and it's like somebody trying to talk. And if it's not, if, a, if I don't answer the phone, they'll usually leave a voicemail. And I think that's scary. I don't know what it means, but it scared the shit out of me. And I think this is where I'm going to end the video. So, I mean, if you want more stories about my experiences, uh, comment. Uh, give me a thumbs up on this video. Um, tell me about your paranormal, you know, experiences. I'd really like to know. Uh, I love reading different people's experiences with what had happened to you. So, um, I'm very, very, uh, curious about that. So, uh, yeah, and, uh, I can't wait to start making more videos. I think, uh, this is gonna be great. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and, uh, hope you have a fucking good weekend. I love you all, and I'll see you next week.